the objective of this video is to write linear functions that model data. And there are many real life relationships that can be described by a linear function. We call this linear function a model. To write a linear model, we must know at least one data point and the slope, just like we were doing when we had to write the equations of lines. The thing that we have to think about, though, is that the slope in the context of real life problems sometimes is given to us in terms of how things change. But in any case, this is one of the most powerful aspects of mathematics, that is to be able to express things that happen in the real world mathematically. And so let's look at this example. We want to write a linear function that models the given data. An e-commerce site charges businesses a monthly fee of $30 plus 50 cents per transaction that is made on the e-commerce site. Write a linear function that represents the total fees the business owes for X transactions. Then use the model to determine the monthly fee for a business that has 1,000 transactions in a month. And so our goal is to come up with a function of the form f of x equals mx plus b, where m in this case represents the change in y divided by the change in x. The y value is the change in the fee, right, the monthly fee. And the change in x is the change in the transactions. So this slope in this case represents what is the change in fee per transaction. And we actually are given that information. The change in fee is 50 cents, right? For every additional transaction, I will have to add 50 cents to my cost. Then the value of b represents that initial cost, right? It is the order pair zero some number, it means what is the cost of zero transactions. And that in this case is that monthly base fee that we have to pay. Therefore the function is f of x is equal to 0.50x plus 30. Now, if you can't think of it like that, make a table of values and actually think about, well, what would be the cost, right? If I have zero transactions, it's $30. If I make one transaction, it's $30 plus the 50 cents, which would be 30.50. If I make two transactions, it's $30 plus 50 cents for each of those, which would be $1. Right, so it would be $31. And then I could find the slope between the two points and plug into the point slope form. In any case, now I want to find the cost or the fee for 1,000 transactions in a month. So this tells me I need to find f of 1,000, which would be 0 0.50 times 1,000 plus 30. And this is 500 plus 30 or $530. Example B is the fall enrollment in degree granting post-secondary institutions in the United States in 2000 was about 13.155 million. In 2020, the fall enrollment was about 16.692 million. Write a linear function that models the fall enrollment in degree granting post-secondary institutions in the U.S. in X years after 2000. And then we will use our model to predict the enrollment in the year 2025. So this problem is a little bit different, right? We don't have a base fee. We don't have a cost per month or a cost per transaction. So what we have to think about in this problem is to get two data points that represent this situation. And think about what our linear function needs to be. Our linear function f of x equals mx plus b, we're told that x is a years after 2000, and f of x, or the y value, is the fall enrollment. So 
So in this case, we actually know two data points. We know that in the year 2000, the enrollment was 13.155 million. And in the year 2020, it was 16.692 million. So we can convert this information to an ordered pair. But you have to be careful here because X is the years after 2000. So the year 2000 actually represents an X value of zero. So one ordered pair is zero, 13.155. And then the 2020, well, that's 20 years after 2000, so that would be the x value of 20, and then 16.692. So now we just have a problem where we need to write the equation of the line that goes through these two points. Recall the first thing we need to write the equation of a line is slope. So to find the slope, we will substitute these points into m is equal to y sub 2, minus y sub 1 divided by x sub 2 minus x sub 1 and we get 16.692 minus 13.155 divided by 20 minus 0. And in doing that calculation we should get 3.537 divided by 20. And then this simplifies to be 0 0.17685. So think about just what the context of this number means. Our slope is telling us that the fall enrollment is increasing by about 0.18 million each year from 2000 to 2020. Um, and so now we can then find the equation. But the thing about this equation that I want you to recognize is that we know the slope now. And we actually know the B value, right? Because the B value is what is the Y value when X is zero. And so therefore our equation would be F of X is equal to point 017685x plus 13.155. Now again, if you didn't notice that the B value is there with one of the two points given, you could plug into the point slope form and get this function. And then for the last part of the problem, we want to predict the fall enrollment in 2025. So we're assuming that this type of growth continues, and based on this growth, we can make projections. And so for the third part of this process, we want to find the enrollment in the year 2025, but how many years is 2025 after 2000? 25, and so I have to find F of 25, which would be 0 0.17685 times 25, plus 13.155. And we will round this to the nearest thousandths, 17.576. So this is telling us that in the year 2025, the fall enrollment would be about 17.576 million. Some other linear models that we will work with are a linear cost function, a linear revenue function. A linear cost function represents the cost C of X to produce X items. The cost function is a sum of variable cost and fixed cost and is defined by C of X, which is equal to MX plus B. So B represents our fixed cost, that is the cost of not producing anything, right? There are some fixed costs like your rent that is not dependent on the number of items that you actually produce. And then the variable cost, this is represented by the MX. So M, in this case the slope, represents what is the cost to produce each item. All 
right? So again, that's telling us how is a cost changing. Again, that slope. And then a linear revenue function represents a revenue, r of x, to sell x items. So the revenue function is defined by r of x equals p times x. So p, if we're thinking about selling items, p is basically the price that we sell each item. And then a linear profit function represents a profit P of X to produce and sell X items. The profit function is defined by P of X, which equals R of X minus C of X. So that is the profit is our revenue minus our cost. So all the money we bring in, we have to take care of all of our expenses and what's left over is the profit. And the break even point occurs when profit is equal to zero. And that is when revenue is equal to cost. So here's an example. We have a graphics company produces and sells t-shirts for $20. They have monthly cost of $580. It costs the company $4 to make each t-shirt. We want to determine the cost function, revenue function, profit function, and the break-even point. So our cost function, if you recall, comes from our, it's mx plus b, but it is our fixed cost plus our variable cost, or the cost per creating the item. So our monthly costs are this $580, and it costs the company $4 to make each t-shirt. So the cost per item is four times the number of items that we sell plus the fixed cost, which is 580. So the cost function is 4x plus 580. The revenue function, r of x, is our p times x. That is the price that we sell each t-shirt for times the number that we sell. So it sells the t-shirts for $20, so our revenue function is 20 times x. In the profit function, we just have to apply the fact that the profit is revenue minus cost. And we'll get more into operations on functions in an upcoming section. But revenue minus cost would be the 20x minus, and this is important, we have to put this in parentheses, the cost function in parentheses is 4x plus 580. Distributing, we get 20x minus 4x minus 580. And then combining like terms, that would be 16x minus 580. And then the break-even point comes from when our profit is equal to zero. So we can set 16x minus 580 equal to zero. We will add 580 to each side to get 16x equals 580. And then divide by 16 to get 36.25. So the break-even point would mean that we need to sell 36.25 t-shirts to break even. We can't really sell a partial t-shirt, so we would have to sell 37 t-shirts to break even.